Hi, this is Blake from ThirstShim.com, and today for Training Talk, we're going to talk about the jump mat, and the ultimate question is, is the jump mat reliable? So, to briefly describe what the jump mat is, I'm going to have some pictures over here to kind of show you what it looks like. It's essentially a mat that the athlete's going to stand on. It's connected to basically like a reader to show you the results. The athlete's going to jump as high as they possibly can off the ground slash mat. They're going to land, and then that little monitor is going to tell us how high they jumped off of the mat. Now, this is great. helps you measure your vertical jump, and the vertical jump can tell us a lot about overall athleticism. It can tell us how much force they can put into the ground. And obviously the more force they can put into the ground, the higher they're gonna get off the ground. That gives us a vertical jump number. That number can then basically tell us the opportunity that the athlete might have in terms of overall like acceleration, so to speak, because obviously they're, for, they're going against gravity and gravity is constantly pulling down. More explosive, powerful athletes are gonna have a bigger uh, vertical jump, especially if you start looking at some of the lighter weight athletes who put a ton of force on the ground. There's those kids that are doing awesome things in the air. So it's also great for sports like basketball, volleyball, uh, track and field, and you can use it for other sports, football, uh, uh, as well to try to measure some of that. Now, we use the vertical jump. We use a Vertec, so that's a giant little uh, pole thing. It's got the little plastic things that you're gonna tap, uh, and then basically you measure the athlete's reach, then you move it up, see how they can jump, take their top number that they touched. Let's just say it's eight foot and their reach was up to six. So they've got a 24 inch vertical or two feet vertical, and that's another way that you can do this. Now. From a reliability standpoint, it's shown that the jump mat is pretty reliable in terms of studies. However, what I'm gonna tell you is that there are some ways you can kind of trick that test, okay? So the main way that this is giving us the results is it's taking the athlete that's on it, they're gonna push into the mat, it's gonna measure that force, they're gonna jump, and then it's gonna remeasure that force. And then it's also gonna use that to calculate how long that person's in the air, okay? So it, it basically knows as soon as they leave, that was a one, thousand two, and they come down, and then it calculates out using that data what their estimated jump is. Now, here's going to be the caveat of how that test can be kind of fudged. Okay, the first one's going to be when athletes jump, they do the arm swing thing. Okay, now. It's not gonna make a huge difference, but when we're using a calculation of time, every 10th or even 100th is gonna change that calculation to some degree. So if they're doing that to try to stay in the air longer, essentially when they do this, they're trying to get more hang time in the air, that's gonna ex ex extrapolate that time component, which is then gonna fudge the numbers to say that they jumped higher. So I don't think that's a huge issue, but it is something that is real. When you watch them on social media, there's athletes doing this all the time, they're moving the hands. Ideally, you're gonna jump straight up, reach straight up and come straight down, just like if you were doing a vertical jump test. I think that's the most reliable way to do that test, to take that portion out of it. The other one would be, when the athlete goes to land, obviously when they go to land, if they can keep their legs up higher, let's just say theoretically they can land more with their legs bent rather than landing with their legs straight because you're gonna jump with your legs straight. You know, the absolute last second, your big toe is gonna be the last thing, shoe, it's gonna be the last thing that leaves the mat. That should be the first thing that hits the mat. But as you're coming down, if you pick your feet up a little bit and have your knees extra bent and then they hit at a later time, again, you're extrapolating out that time perspective and then it's gonna calculate out that you jumped higher than you did. Now, I'm not gonna say that it's not reliable. It's probably in the ballpark of probably an inch or two of being correct in most cases. Again, the best way to instruct athletes to do this is to jump straight up like they're doing a regular vertical jump test, and then when they land, keep their legs relatively straight still absorb the force, but land with the legs relatively straight rather than trying to bring their knees up to offset that time. That's gonna be the way to make it the most reliable if you do use it in your facility. I like using the Vertec, one, because I can account for their reach. I can immediately measure their reach, make sure their feet are really flat, use their arms, they can reach up as high as they want. Really, this is the only thing that's kind of subjective is how they reach, but I really, really make them reach and I give them a couple attempts because I've noticed that if I just have them reach and push, push that little uh, plastic piece out of the way, they're not gonna reach as much. So I have them step away, re-step back in, really, really reach, kind of lean to the side, just like if you're gonna dunk on somebody because when you go to actually jump on that vertex and go to do it, you're gonna lean a little bit away from your, your long arm to touch the highest one that you can. So I try to get that out of there as well. 
and then obviously measure their top jump and then subtract and it is pretty freaking close now you might be a half inch to an inch off with some kids that maybe aren't really reaching truly as high as they are but you're not going to see any kind of crazy discrepancy and the other thing i like is it's easier to track over time, are they touching higher? So I guess we know they will grow um, and their arms are gonna get longer, so to speak. So we know that that's gonna influence their reach, but I also want to know their top reach. So if we can put three inches on their vertical and their arms get a little longer, and let's just say at the end of the day, they get an extra six inches of reach, guess what? For a kid that was only touching nine, eight, they may be close to dunking now because we gave them three inches and they got three inches. They're not gonna be able to get that ball over. That's still a metric that I want to be able to tap into and use to see what's helping this kid be successful. Yeah, we had a part of it, but we weren't the only one that had a part of it, okay? The, obviously, the genetics did as well. So I think that's the best way to go about it. Is it reliable? Studies say that it is. I will tell you that that probably really depends and in most studies they're probably getting these done i didn't go into depth of looking at them but they're probably getting these done very strict from a reliability standpoint and that's a great thing about most academia is that the procedures are very strict to ensure that things are going to if they're testing a device like this to make sure they're working well they're going to think all this stuff out in terms of how to make sure that the device tests what it's supposed to test so i'm personally a vertex fan um, but if you have either one they're great if you're using the pad to jump off of just please make sure you're trying to control what you can control with your athletes the best that you can so you can give them the most accurate information i know it's great to see these 36 inch jumps but the truth of the matter is some of these kids are maybe only getting 32 31 which is still super impressive but again i like good hard data that i can physically see uh, and control myself rather than letting the athlete have some words that they can kind of bend that time when they go to land on the jump map. So if you got any questions about this, I know it's a really quick, kind of odd video, but definitely something that I see a lot. And I think people are kind of curious about whether it is truly reliable. Studies say so, but just some things to keep in mind the next time you do your jump mat training. Got any questions? Leave them in the comment section. Thanks, have a great day.